Welcome back to Johnny Ray's Backwoods Guns. Shooting a video tonight for my YouTube channel, Reloading with Johnny Ray. Tonight we are going to shoot an exciting, heart-pounding, adrenaline-pumping video on the 357 SIG. You guys, I know I've got you on the edge of your seat, all right? I'm probably just setting you up for a big fall. But anyway, um, 357 SIG, I'm going to load it with 357 SIG factory brass, and I'm going to load it with 40 Smith & Wesson brass. Stick around, guys. I'll show you how to do it. All right, guys. Let's go over my components. I'm going to use uh, Federal uh, Small Magnum Pistol Primers. I'm going to use Hornady 357 SIG dies, Hornady 9mm, 124 grain XTPs. I've got a Wilson uh, case gauge that's going to help me load. And I ordered a factory crimp from Lee. This is going to help me uh, crimp my shells. These 357 SIGs really need crimped. I'm going to use a Reliant um, Blue Dot. All right, let's go to my loading book. And uh, 124 grain, I'm going to use the case overall length 1.140. Slide down here to Blue Dot. And 10.5 is the max charge. 10.1 is right behind it at 1,300 feet per second. That's fine with me. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to load at 10 grains, even. If you look over in your SIG book, you go to blue dot, you go under 124 grain. A 10.1 is a max charge, and it's got a 94% case fill. Okay, guys, uh, you want to go with about a 95 to 98% case fill on this, this type of bullet. In this uh, case, and I'll uh, when we get to seating, I'll tell all about it. But that's uh, my components. That's what I'm going to use tonight. So let's uh, get on and uh, get this party started. Seven Sig factory piece of 357 Sig. I already knocked the primers out of the 357 Sig. But this over here is the 40 Smith and Wesson. All right, I'm going to show you how I size it. So first thing first, I've got my Lee turret press set up. So, uh, you know, it's just your standard lead turret press. I put Hornady dies in my turret here. Make sure they're all nice and tight. She's tight. All right. But if I'm going to size, you got to think of these um, 357 SIGs as a uh, tiny uh, rifle case, all right, because you've got to put a neck in there, okay? And that's how your chamber is going to headspace off that shoulder. So anyway, to uh, get your 40 to look like that, just put a little lube on it, all right? You don't, when you lube your cases to size them, you want to lube them so they feel lubed, not, they look, not that they look lubed, they want to feel lubed, all right? This is a little dented up, but what's going to happen is that'll form out, all right? Since we're using a Hornady sizing die, then you want to use a Hornady shell holder. That's a number 10. All right, the Lee shell holders are number 19s for uh, what they say to use when you're doing uh, 357 SIGs. And here's, a, I wouldn't use a Lee shell holder sizing with a Hornady die, but if you look at this, this is a Lee, and this is a little loose, okay, there's a little slop in there. If you go to the uh, Hornady, there's no slop in there, okay, it's a, a much tighter fit. And when you're sizing a shoulder, you really want a good, uh, good tight fit. Same thing with this. When you're si using a sizing Hornady sizing die, you want to use a Hornady shell holder because these are different. This shelf where your uh, head stamp will, uh, your head case will slide right in there. It's the right height configured out how long this die is. So anyway, just run it up real slow. Like what I like to do, make a full stroke. Bring it down, and I turn it about a quarter to half a turn, and one more time. Make a full stroke. Okay, now you've got a, pretty much a factory 357 case. It's going to be about 13, 14,000 shorter, okay, than um, this. If you look, you can tell one's a little taller than the other. All right, that's your factory brass. That's the converted brass. Okay, so... With these being different case volumes, 
and it's a shorter piece of brass. Your case over overall case length is still going to be 1.14, and your bullet, when you seat it down, it's still going to be the same distance. You'll just have less neck tension. You'll have less brass squeezing the neck of that um, bullet. That's why you've got to use a leaf factory crimp. That's, that's the only big question everybody complains about is 40 brass. Of course, 40s, 357s, 10 millimeters, those are high pressure rounds. And when you shoot them in unsupported cases, you're going to have a problem with bulging towards the uh, head case, towards the bottom of the uh, brass. So we're going to run these through the bulge buster. Uh, I'm just going to repeat this process for the 357 and the 40s. I don't need to show it to you on camera, and I'll just meet you at my bulge buster. All right, guys, I'm going to bulge bust this um, um, brass that's been shot. Okay, uh, this is a Lee 40, 10, 40 uh, factory crimp. Okay, I took the top off and the guts out. It's got a carbide ring at the bottom of it, okay? What happens is when you shove brass through it, we're going to shove it all the way through so it's going to size the whole case. So all you do is just uh, screw it down in your uh, little press. Feels tight. Now all this does is guide your brass up and into your catcher. So just uh, screw this down. Pretty simple process. This is the Lee Lee uh, bulge buster. It's called a. A lot of guys call them Glock bulges, but um, when you uh, run a piece of brass up, normally it just comes up and sizes and goes down. This shoves it all the way through, okay? So all you do, head stamp bottom, run it up through, and after you get about four or five, they'll start popping out. Now if you shoot a supported case gun, and you're reloading for your same supported case gun, then you probably won't have to do this. But, SIGs, um, Glocks, shoot unsupported, it's, it's, a, it's a mixed. Um, and if you don't know what the ammo is going to be shot in, like I don't know what, what, who's going to shoot what and what gun. So I just run all of them through the bulge buster. This uh, is going to size 357 SIGs, 10 millimeter, and 40 Smith Wesson. All right, we've done uh, form the brass. We're just sizing it, trying to get the, the bottom of the head stamp, the bottom of the head case. It'll bulge out a little bit. And so when you're running this through this die, um, it, this crimping die, it is uh, running the whole case through so there's nothing left for chance. So I'll run all the 357s through, all the 40s through, and then I'll prep my brass on my uh, Lyman case prep machine. So I'll see you at the Lyman case prep machine, guys. All right, if you've uh, been watching my videos, you'll realize I snapped a, uh, a tool off in that head and I had to take this apart and uh, change this head. I did that today. Uh, so I'm going to put this to good use. Any other time if I had to trim my 357 SIG brass I would use this. Screw it down in here and hold my brass on and let it trim. But all my brass is short enough where I don't need to trim it. So I'm going to uh, fill this up with a brush, 9 millimeter brush. Flip it on. First of all, first of all, I'm going to uniform the primer pockets with this. This is one of those new RCBS heads. Well, it's not new. It's they came out with them about six months ago. And then I'm going to use an RCBS small primer pocket brush to clean it up. And then I'm going to deburr and I'm going to chafe. Okay. Now, when I turn 40 Smith Wesson brass into 357 brass. Anytime I chop, trim, do anything to my brass, I always chafe and deburr a little extra So because I've got a new neck. So let's get started. I'm going to uh, clean that primer pocket and I actually, I'm going to lock it in these uh, rubber coated pliers I got. I love these things. So get the primer pocket nice and uniform and cut it the right depth. It, they're probably already cut the right depth but it just makes my makes me feel better in my mind that it's all the same, all uniform. Now I'm going to uh, 
deburr the outside, chafe the inside. Like I said, I'm going to do it just a little bit longer than usual. And then what I'll do is run that brush, get all that brass and whatnot out of it. Okay, you can see it looks real nice. And top it off, I'll just uh, take my air compressor, blow it out, blow the primer hot pocket out. And that piece of, piece of brass is ready to load, guys. Now I'm going to do all the 357 SIGs like this, and I'm going to do uh, all the Smith & Wesson 40s like this. Uh, then we'll uh, get to priming and powder. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to use small magnet pistol primers. I'm just going to prime one of these. You guys have seen me prime a million times. I'm going to prime on the bench. I've set my primer in my primer cup. And uh, there you go. It's primed. I'll prime all the 40s and 357s exact same way, and we'll start powdering. I'll see you at my powder dropper. All right, guys, uh, get you a little level like this. These cost uh, three or four bucks up at Home Depot. You can level it left and right and back and forth, okay? Uh, make sure your scale is level. All right? If you notice, this is minus 2187. That's what my scale is zeroing out when I take the funnel off. That's the funnel I'm going to use. There you go, zero, lift up, minus 2187. All right, I've got a little yellow note here. It always tells me. That way, I, when I'm uh, getting powder into my funnel, I can check it a quick glance. It, keeps, it reminds me of what my scale is supposed to be reading without the funnel. And I'm throwing 10 grain of powder. So um, let's get to throwing, guys. All right, guys, I'm using my RCVS Uniflow uh, powder dropper. I already set it up. 10 grain of uh, powder, of course, you know, this is your metering screw. Just screw it in uh, back and forth to uh, adjust your powder flow. I've already got it set to about 10, so we're going to throw a load. Walk right over here to the scale and see what it comes up. It comes up 9.9. .9. Uh, let's lift up, set it back down, 9.9. .9. Now we're just going to trickle just a little bit and get 10. This blue dot beaters pretty well. So pick right up, down to 10. If you notice, my zero just moved just a second. 10.1. Okay, I would call that a good charge because if you notice, my zero has jumped. Um, and yeah, I'm going to use that, guys. Uh, this is just plinking ammo for the range, not rifle ammo not hunting with it, not shooting matches. Fill my case up. It, it's about a 90% case fill, guys. That's right about the shoulder feel, or the shoulder level. 90, 95, 96, 97. Uh, that's going to end up looking good. Uh, let's do another one. If you notice, it says minus 2188. And of course, my little yellow note says 2187. So this might throw one. That's uh, rather low. Just get her up to 10. Lift up. Reset. Okay, that's a good charge for me. I'm going to call that a good charge. All right, guys, the reason you want a 90% case feel is you don't have a lot of neck tension here for your neck to dig into your bullet. All right? And uh, when you have that much powder, it, it uh, reduces your chance of setback, which is your bullet being drove down into your brass. Uh, that kind of helps it because you've got this small neck. All right? So let's throw another load. And... Uh, what I'm doing is I'm loading all 357 SIG right now. Ten point one. All right, I'm gonna call that a good load, guys. I'm shooting for ten. Ten five was the max, so I'm not worried about. Um, and I check, make sure it's good. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to load uh, a bunch of 3576, and then I'm going to move my powder dropper down to 9 grain and load the, the 40 converted into 3576. So I'm going to have two different loads. So uh, I'll, I'll get these powdered up, and I'll we'll meet you at my uh, turnt press, and we'll uh, seat, crimp, uh, we'll, we'll flare, seat, and then crimp. See right, guys, I picked these XTP bullets. It's got this flat surface, this flat bearing surface, and then it slopes into your point of your hollow point. Because you've got a small neck here that's got to grip it. Okay? And if you notice where that powder is, it's right around your uh, shoulder line. I'm going to seat these bullets right around that line right there. So it's going to uh, be seated pretty deep. So like I said at the beginning of the video, this is probably going to be a 95 to 98% case fill. And what that's going to do, that's going to help resist uh, setback. And I'll show you about setback in just a second. But let's get uh, loading. Uh, the first thing we want to do is flare the brass. These are uh, flat base bullets. So on flat base bullets where it's flat, there's no boat tail, you got to help it. So we flared it. Now we're going to move over to our seating die. And our seating die is that micrometer. I've already set it up. These things are extremely uh, accurate. So let's seat the bullet. It's got that self-centering uh, baffle right there, flange, and it helps uh, hold the bullet centered. So um, looks like a good load. Now it just needs to be crimped. Move over to our crimping die, and I like to uh, set it hard. There we go. Now, that's your finished case, okay? Let's check the, the uh, overall length. It should be 1140. 1140. Now, let me show you how to check. Um, go like this, because these bullets have a small neck on them, and just pound it down a little bit. Just hit it straight down. All right, guys, to check that, like I said, to check that, just pound the, the bullet down, straight down with your uh, hollow point towards your surface, and just see if it's going to uh, set back. That powder is keeping it from setting back. There we go, 1140. All right, that crimp's perfect. That uh, overall case length is perfect. All right, so I'm going to build the rest of these, and um, here I'll build one more. Um, Take your bullet, flare, set your bullet down, it's flared just perfect, see, move your factory crimp around, and I like to like bump it, okay, and that makes a good nice uh, bump, let's try this, that one is uh, right under 1140 by half. So that's good enough for me, guys. Um, if you want me to, I can check that again. 1140, okay. So that's it, guys. That's uh, that's how I'll build the rest of this off this ammo or off the camera. And um, a big thing, first of all, I'd like to apologize. One of my lights overhead went out. That's why you're seeing a bunch of shadows. I'm gonna get that fixed in the next day or two. Okay, guys. Um, I'm trying to show you every step I make, but trying not to make my videos an hour and a half long. Okay, guys, 20, 25 minutes is probably more than enough time for anybody that can sit around and listen to me ramble and talk shit. And uh, just, uh, I don't want to waste your time. But I want to try to go over all the steps that I do. All right, guys, this is one of those Wilson chamber checkers. Anytime you're dealing with uh, brass, and unless it's a straight wall case, I always get a chamber checker. Uh, if you get the barrel out of your gun, you can use the barrel out of your gun, pop it out of your Glock, pop it out of your SIG, or just grab one of these, drop it down, you can see how it's nice, recessed, um, it's not bulged, it's going to it's gonna chamber, and you can check your length too. They say you set it on a flat surface, and if your brass is sticking above this outside, you see how you got a recess here. There's 5,000 difference between the upper portion and the lower portion. As long as it's in the middle, it's not too long. Like I said, we checked all this. We didn't have to trim. You might have to trim that after a couple of shootings, but 
right now there's no uh, danger in shooting this. So I'm just going to set right here and uh, check all this. This is the uh, 40 that I made into 357 sig. And I'll check it. It's good. And uh, I'll chamber check all this to make sure it all uh, chamber and we won't have any issues. Well, that's it, guys. That's how I load my 357 SIGs. That's how I convert my 40s into 357 SIG. Um, I wish it was, uh, I wish tonight, Thursday night, I wish it was Saturday night because I'd go to the range and shoot these and uh, film a little bit of it and I'd tie it on the end of this video. But it's Thursday night. I'll get this video out tomorrow morning. Um, that way uh, you don't have to wait on it. I'm going to load 45 gap this week. I'm going to load 10 millimeter AK-47 and I'm going to turn AK-47 into 6.5 Creed. So in the next week, week and a half, I'm going to pump out three or four videos. So I'll get to the range this Sunday and I'll, I'll uh, shoot some of my ammo, not, not sure what. But if you got any questions, comments, just let, leave them uh, in the comments section. I'll try to answer any questions I can. I appreciate you guys watching my videos. I appreciate your time. I know your time is valuable. I try to condense everything and put as many uh, details as I can. And without dragging, um, dragging my uh, videos to an hour long. You know, nobody wants to sit around and listen to me for an hour. Uh, ask any of my ex-wives, they'll swear to it. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot. You all uh, make sure you uh, share, like, and stick around, and I'll show you uh, uh, how I fix my Lyman case uh, prep machine today. I've got about a three-minute video I'll tie at the end of this. Thank you, guys. You all have a great day.
this or not down. I told him I barely use it. I only crack 3,000 pieces of grass a week on this thing. <laughs> but they did send me this free. I stripped that head out and snapped a tool off in that. Couldn't get it out, so we had to change this gear. It's all good. Much to it, isn't it? Mm -mm. Until you get down to the gut. Probably put together by some damn robot, robot, <laughs> or some damn um, more Korean. Little small hands. Yeah. That duct tape so that gorilla uh, tape. Yeah. Oh, so that really we uh, have it. Think we need to put extra grease on that? Uh, Thing. You have too much lube and not enough. That's what she said. Yeah. Like broke dick. Can't beat it, right? <laughs> or a sore dick. Yeah, something like that. It's a little louder, too.